I happen to have used a lot of Raspberry Pis. I used it in electronics projects over the years from security cameras, radar, security monitors, and then the Brax router, VPN, and Tor routers. I've also used it as a standard computer to run boat navigation and ham radio software. Certainly you can use it even for simple things like web browsing. Because of the software products I've made, I've sold a lot of Raspberry Pis or caused people to buy them. But guess what? Since COVID, I haven't been able to buy wholesale stock of Raspberry Pis. And if you can buy them, the prices are horrendous, especially for something so low powered. I've searched for alternatives and I found one or more than one. You may be into making electronics projects or you want to use one of my software products like my Brax router, or you might also want an inexpensive desktop computer to use. If you're looking for a new option that's similar to the deal we get with the Raspberry Pi, let's talk about new options. Stay right there. Let's just set a starting point. Let's scan the internet for sources of Raspberry Pis and check out their prices. Usually I buy stock from Canakit in Canada. Just for comparison, I used to buy the Base Pi 4B board 2GB for around $35, then a power supply for $9.95, a case for $10, an SD card for $5. So for $60, you were all set. Add shipping and maybe an updated case, heat sinks, updated power supply, and you get to maybe $75 to $80. That was similar in price to the Raspberry Pi 3B, which was the prior model. Then COVID happened. And we discovered a funny thing. Though the Raspberry Pi is marketed as a UK product, it is a product of the UK-based Raspberry Pi Foundation. In reality, it is built in China. And for reasons I cannot explain to you, the whole Raspberry Pi supply chain is completely broken. This is likely the most popular computer in the world at a previous price point of $35 to $50, and now you can't find one. If you manage to snag the ones floating around, like I had some old stock still, you will find them being sold at outrageous prices. Typically, they'll only have the rare 8 gigabyte version available, which is totally unnecessary for kit projects. In fact, there's absolutely no reason for me to go even beyond 1 gigabyte, but I can't find those. So for whatever unknown reason, the Raspberry Pi production has pretty much ceased for years. My last wholesale purchase, which was a multi-month wait, was two and a half years ago. I've had enough. My primary product that uses the Raspberry Pi 4B is the Brax router product. This is a VPN and Tor router. And I haven't sold one router in years. Recently, I've been searching for a replacement. Actually, I've been searching for replacements for a long time. Just as an example, I've considered switching to the Rock 64 board from Pine64.com. Pine64 is a great company. I have their Pine phone, which is a Linux project phone. Well, let's look at the supply of Rock 64 on their site. Out of stock. Rock 64 is also built in China. Well, Zuck, whatever I need has to be in stock all the time. Otherwise, I'll be left with no options if I stick to one-off kind of hardware. I actually thought about using a Pine phone as the motherboard itself since it would have all the parts needed for projects. It is a Linux ARM based computer, so it would be great for development. Again, no stock or development models only. There are other specialty single board computers available, but no good supply coming from China. So this is a good thing to think about. Why are we relying on China for every zucking electronic part? Another separate rant. In any case, I was just scanning through Amazon at the lowest price computers and I found a few. The one that caught my eye particularly was the Intel NUC and specifically the Intel NUC 7. NUC means next unit of computing and I'll give you more details in a moment, but in general it is Intel's mini PC form factor. Now there are other models I will discuss so don't leave yet. 
Here's the particular model I was looking at. First look at the price. As I showed you earlier, a fully equipped Raspberry Pi 4 is close to $200 with shipping and you can't even find one. We'll look at the price of this little nook. I'll have the link in the description. Not bad, right? Now, I do have particular configurations that interest me in order to have a project computer, specifically for use in what I do. It has to be small. An Intel NUC is larger than a Raspberry Pi. However, the difference is that the Intel NUC is a complete thing with case, and so this includes everything. What is unique about the Intel NUC as far as form factor is that the case includes space for a hard drive. If you open up an actual NUC, the hard drive actually takes up most of the room, so this would be barely larger than a Raspberry Pi 4B if you just look at the motherboard. A NUC is different from a Raspberry Pi in that it is really a standard Intel-based computer, meaning it is no different than your Intel laptop or your Intel desktop. And the important thing for anyone doing projects is that it be Linux based. I'm happy to tell you that Intel NUCs run Linux very well. And unlike a Raspberry Pi, it doesn't need any special version of Linux. On this particular NUC 7, I'm running Ubuntu 22.04. And this really makes it simple. On a Raspberry Pi, typically you have to use their own version of Debian, which is called Raspbian. I'll put a link in the description of a PDF file showing instructions on how to install Ubuntu 20.04 on a NUC, which is usually preloaded with Windows. Because a Raspberry Pi is so low powered and has a slow CPU, there are optimizations made in the Raspbian OS that makes a Raspberry Pi usable. For example, a Raspberry Pi by default boots from the SD card. This is good and bad. The good is that you do not need a hard drive to do your projects. The bad is that an SD card is ultra slow, so starting the Raspberry Pi is a tedious slog. In comparison, booting from a SATA hard drive on an Intel NUC is one third of the time, around 30 seconds, and it could be faster if you're using an SSD drive. Since there's no actual price difference today between a Raspberry Pi 4 and an Intel NUC 7, then you need to actually see what you're getting. I'll be frank with you, a Raspberry Pi isn't worth $200, but an Intel NUC 7 at under $200 is a very good deal because we're typically getting 8GB of RAM, 256GB hard drive, and a Celeron CPU that's multiple times faster than a Raspberry Pi, though it uses more power. In other words, it opens up to more potential uses because it has more capability. Faster processor, faster boot, made to work with a hard drive, standard Linux. At the current prices of Raspberry Pis, it is a no-brainer. So I've redone my Brax Router software to work on an Intel NUC. But rather than limit it to the Intel NUC, I've now reprogrammed my Brax Router software to work on any NUC as long as it's running Ubuntu 20.04. The current model is an Intel NUC 12, which is actually as powerful as any brand new computer. For example, I got this Intel NUC 12, which is an i7 12th generation CPU. Yeah, it's much more expensive than the NUC 7, but here we're talking about desktop performance. Because the NUCs run standard Ubuntu 20.04, I've just generalized my software to handle the differences between the models. There are differences in programming for sure, but having the same OS really simplifies things. I think the way I program my Brax Router code should allow it to work on any computer that can run Ubuntu 20.04, so it will not be limited to a NUC. Now, I don't know if an Intel NUC 7 is available everywhere. This was a motherboard originally made by Intel in 2018. I see it on Amazon and it seems to be readily available. Is this just an overstock situation and the supply might run out? The reason I say this is that my international customers have been unable to find a NUC 7 in their areas like in the EU and Canada. So maybe there's just suppliers that are selling on Amazon USA and they're selling overstock. This can't be good for the long run then if we cannot get long-term stock. We don't want a repeat of the Raspberry Pi supply chain issue. 
However, the good news is that this is a standard Intel computer. So all the NUCs you can buy are all compatible. The cheap ones are the ones with the Celeron processor, such as the Intel J4005, Intel J5040, Intel N5105, Intel N5095. So here's another one that is marked as a NUC 11, but it doesn't use the typical i5 to i7 processor. It doesn't even matter what the NUC generation is, it's more important to refer to the chip model and the price range. Functionally, the main difference between a Celeron-based computer and your typical quad-core Intel CPU is speed. But be aware of what you're buying. Understand that some of the sellers price these as barebone, meaning no hard drive and no memory. Sometimes it is cheaper to buy the hard drive and memory yourself. Interestingly though, you can't really buy anything smaller than a 256 gigabyte SATA hard drive or less than eight gigabytes of RAM. I'll make you aware of this though, so you make purchases of these computers in a smart way. The limitations of the older models of NUX is that in 2018, the NUX had no support for USB-C. So if USB-C is important for you, stick to a newer model. Also, the newer models have M2 connectors, which allowed for SSD drives. The older models have built-in support for SATA hard drives only. And obviously, Celeron processors are much slower than the standard Intel i3, i5, or i7 processors. As a general rule, if you're running a lot of graphics like watching videos, then a newer i5 or above CPU will be a smoother experience. I can tell you though that a Celeron N5105 is usable. It's just like an old MacBook Pro from 2015 or so. Now one thing that is interesting about Intel NUC mini PCs is that this is not subject to the China supply chain issue. Intel NUCs are built in Intel factories. Now I don't know specifically which factory it's built in, but most of the Intel products are built in the USA, some in Ireland and some in Israel. So that is refreshing to hear. Hard to make a business model work where supplies are unstable. Now there's another company that sells the Intel Knox or even the AMD version of these, and the company is B-Link. They offer a similar form factor to the Intel NUC mini PC, and I guess B-Link calls this the B-Link Mini PC. B-Link though is a Chinese company, though they appear to be just assembling. The CPUs and motherboard must come from Intel and AMD. Anyway, I'm just offering that as an option since all these are compatible with each other. It's all just a matter of speed differences and what accessories are included. Because B-Link makes their own form factor, just be aware that the models may come with different ports depending on the age. Make sure to check the number of USB ports and distinguish between USB 2.0, 3.1, and if there are USB-C options. Also check for M2 connectors for expansion, which give you easy integration of SSD drives. Now I'll show you another little option I came up with. I tend to want to use my Intel NUC more like a laptop, meaning I'd like to have the flexibility of using it while in my bed, for example, or I just want to use it where there's very little space. This is a neat little option I found. It's called a Dope Display Portable Laptop Monitor. This basically looks like a laptop, and it is powered by a battery, so if fully charged, I can plug into a USB-C on a newer Intel NUC, like a NUC 12, using a single cable and I have the full desktop power of the NUC 12. Just a special thing to note here, you cannot just use any USB-C cable. To do video, you need something called a full featured USB cable. I got that and it works great. I can use it also on the Celeron NUC without a USB-C, but when I do that, I need two cables, one for the HDMI and another USB-C to USB-A cable for the keyboard. So a little bulk here, little extra wires, but this option is very space saving. And the neat thing is that I have multiple NUCs so I can actually switch computers pretty quickly. When I'm doing a live stream, I'm doing that with 
two dope display monitors and two NUCs. Takes very little space with the integrated keyboard and monitors. Anyway, it is clear that the processor speed of an Intel NUC is way more than a Raspberry Pi 4B. So given the lowering of prices using a NUC, I think it is time to retire the Raspberry Pi concept. It had a good run, but China will have caused its death. So goodbye, Raspberry Pi. Folks, I have privacy products that protect your data so it will not be exposed to any rogue app. We have a Brax2 privacy phone running an open source Brax OS that makes your phone invisible. We also do flashing services to de-Google other phone models on our store, as well as stocking pre-flashed pixels. We have a VPN service, Bytes VPN, which has features like Tor routing, DNS obfuscation, and ad blocking. We have Braxmail, which is a metadata free way of doing email where no one knows where the message originated from. These products are on my app, Braxme. Come visit us there. The link is in the description.